How do you really make change? And maybe, just maybe you make change if you can speak to people in a language they understand. To talk to us about that, our next TEDx speaker, Dr. Naif al -Matawa. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the 99, but before that, a little story that happened this summer about speaking people's languages. I have five boys. My fourth is a Scooby-Doo addict. Last year, uh, he got angry at me over dinner and called me a meddling kid. Uh, <laughs> but this summer, I was, I was writing, I was writing in, in, in my office in New York, in my house in New York, and I'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm one of those people, I didn't choose to be a writer, writing chose me, and if I, if I have to write and I'm not writing, you don't want to be around me, I'm not a lot of fun. And uh, my son came to me in my office and said, Baba, he had left a Scooby-Doo toy in his playhouse in the yard. Can you come with me and get the Scooby-Doo toy? I said, uh, I gave him this look, I said, Rayan, later. So he looked at the ground, looked back up to me and said, Baba, I want you to come with me to my office in my house. I have work to do. <laughs> He's three and a half and he brought himself down to my level. <laughs> the 99. I graduated from university in 1994, came back to Kuwait, and within a few months, somebody got fired from their job because of their religion. I was wondering what planet I had just landed on. Because to add insult to injury, the person that fired this man gave out leaflets to the community apologizing that had he known this guy's religion, he wouldn't have hired him to begin with. So I, I, I was confused. I wrote about it in the press, you know, and it didn't really work for me. And so I wrote and illustrated what I thought was a book for adults, but UNESCO thought otherwise. Gave me an award for children's literature. Uh, <laughs> And so, as not, and so as not to argue with them, um, it became a three-book series. The first one did really well. The second one did really well. The third one got banned. The fourth one got banned. I quit writing at the age of 27. I said, enough. I'm not doing this anymore. Went to graduate school to become a clinical psychologist, because my parents told me, I told them when I was nine or 10, I said, I'm going to be a writer when I grow up. And they said, knife, that's a great hobby. <laughs> Don't ever think about doing that as a profession. And so I kind of, you know, I was, you know, I was a closet writer. <laughs> and um, <laughs> did my training. I trained at Bellevue Hospital in the Survivors of Political Torture Program. Because I spoke Arabic, my patients came out of this part of the world, but there were people there from all over the world. We do not have a monopoly on how not to treat others. <laughs> okay? And in my thinking during that process, for, I did it for a couple of years, and I needed a break. Um, and so I went to business school, which was kind of torture. Have you guys ever take, taken finance classes? <laughs> My, p kid, people, called, people called finance 101 baby finance, and I said, this thing grows up? You know? <laughs> you know? So, went to business school, and then I was 32, I had three master's degrees, a doctorate, didn't know what I was going to be when I grew up. And I was making the annual pilgrimage of all Kuwaitis from Edgware Road to Harrods. I was with my mother and my sister, and, I and my sister turns to me, she says, Naif, you remember you say you go back to writing after school, and, and I just wanted to shut her up. I was gonna, all these degrees, I'm going to go back to writing for kids, what, what, what's she thinking? You know? So I said, Samad, for me to go back, it has to have the potential of Pokemon. Otherwise, this makes zero sense. <laughs> right? I say that, she shuts up, and I start thinking. I said Pokemon. My next thought was there had been a fatwa issued against Pokemon in this region. My next thought was, my God, what has happened to Islam, and who's making these random decisions for me? My next thought was of Allah, and how disappointed he must be. My next thought was that Allah had 99 attributes, and ironically, it brought me full circle back to Pokemon. <laughs> I get out of the cab at Harrods, I turn to my sister, I said, what do you think of this? She loved it, and the rest is history. So I ran, I ran with it, I raised... Within a few months, I, you know, I'd written the business plan, wrote the concept, you know, the character bible, or the character guide, as we call it, um, and raised $7 million from 54 investors in eight countries. A million dollars came to me from my classmates in business school. I have investors from Saudi and Lebanon and Kuwait and China and, and Mexico. The reason for the diversity is the business school. But of all my accomplishments, 
the one I think that, that was the most challenging was I think I'm the only Gulf citizen that went to Beirut and actually came out with money. One of, the, one of the questions I kept getting asked, did you talk to any religious scholars? And I would always avoid that question like the plague, right? If I get pushed, I say, well, I spoke to Emo Phillips. Sheikh Phillips, we haven't heard of him. Well, that's a good thing, because he's a comedian. <laughs> what do you mean? I said, well, Emo Phillips said that up until the age of 10, he used to pray to God every day for a bicycle. And at 10, he realized that God didn't work that way, so he stole the bicycle and started praying for forgiveness. I knew in my heart that if I went to somebody and said, this is what I want to do with the 99 attributes of Allah, they would have told me the 100 reasons why I shouldn't do it. And I knew myself enough to know that I'd do it anyway. So why, why deal with that? So I, you know, we created the concept. I got an outpouring of support from various scholars from all over the world, but not in the most conservative countries, where we were, we were not allowed in, into a couple of countries for a couple of years. And the way I dealt with that, I didn't quit writing like I did when I was 27, because I had millions of dollars from other people. Though it was tempting. Um, when I did my second round of finance, I raised $16 million from an Islamic investment bank. Okay? And they have seven member Sharia board who approve what I'm doing for Islamic audiences, and we were allowed into the more conservative places on earth. And one, a cute story from back then is my son, Faisal, came up to me. I was on the phone, and my kids love what I do. I mean, superheroes, they're boys, and what do you think? And he said, I'm on the phone, unicorn said this, unicorn said that. You know, I'm going to have dinner with unicorn, I hang up. Faisal comes to me, big brown eye. He said, Baba? I said, what? So you talk to unicorns too? I had to go to New York two year, three years after 9-11, not only convince people who could do the math and knew that 9 times 11 was 99, right? but I had to convince people that I wanted to create superheroes based on an Islamic archetype. It took a while, but I, I got some of the best names in the industry, people have written for X-Men and Power Rangers and Spider-Man to be part of this project. And, um, and basically, I told my investors, I tell them now, you know, the only person crazier than me was you. you know. But I was able to bring in these, these people to work together on this common goal, and, and the, the, the sell was this to the investors. This, could, this would not, and could not, and will not be another made in fifth world country production. This was going to be Superman, or wasn't worth my time or their money. Okay? So the concept, very simply, the, the 99 is based on 99 attributes of Allah. To boil down the concept, and you, you, there's going to be a premiere tonight, of a, after I speak, of a, set, of a trailer the actual animated series is being sold at MIP as we speak in Cannes. I'm going to show you what the animation is going to look like. But basically, the 99 ca characters from the very beginning, I knew because I had been banned <laughs> that I was not gonna, that was not going to happen to me again. And if it did, Pokemon did plenty well without being allowed into this region. Right? So from the beginning, the intellectual property was registered under a company, the Kuwaiti company's other company in New York from day one. Nobody could come after me. Number two, the characters are from 99 different countries. It wasn't just Arab heroes, right? Because once you get to Spain or Iran, no one cares, right? <laughs> so they're, the characters from the U.S. and Mexico, they're from all over the world, okay? And basically, they're, they're based on those... Somebody mentioned Dar al-Hikmah earlier in the talk, and actually this whole, the whole... There's a story that in 1258, the Mongols invaded Baghdad, and the books from Dar al-Hikmah were thrown in the Tigris River, and the Tigris changes color with ink. It's a story that kids grew up here with. I used that as a pivot, and I rewrote it. In my version, that knowledge was saved onto 99 stones and was scattered all over the world. But those books were not just Muslim books, because the caliph at the time had told his scholars, translate any book you get your hands into, and I'll give you its weight in gold. After a while, the advisor complained. He said, your highness, the, 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 scholars, the scholars are cheating. They're writing in big handwriting to take more gold. <laughs> and he said, let them be, because what they're giving our culture is worth a lot more than what we're giving them. <laughs> so those books that power the 99, it's collective civilization, okay? But of course, we had, we had, I'll take you through some of the characters real quick so I get to the animation. This is Jamat from Hungary, he's our technology character. Hadia from the UK, uh, she's originally from Pakistan, she's able to find things. Jabbar from Saudi. <laughs> Listen, I'm from Kuwait, we're a small country, so. <laughs> Noura from the Emirates. And anybody, tells you, anybody who tells you Ajaj was the first Emirati superhero? No. <laughs> but I didn't say that. Okay. Mumita from Portugal is one of the things I had to decide because early on, the 99 attributes of Allah have a yin and yang, right? There's Jabbar, Hakim, Muhammad, right? There's the, the powerful, the strong, the hegemonist. There's the kind, the merciful. 
we're, we're going to have the girls, you know, mending the bones while the girl, boys are breaking them? I said, no. So Momita is a girl, but she's a fighter. I've met a few of those. <laughs> Fatah is, 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 is from Indonesia. He opens up portals that they travel through. Samir from France. Samir is mute. We have a character in a wheelchair. We're working on a blind one and a deaf one as well. Mujibo is our first hijab-wearing character. We're going to have four or five that do that. But again, so a lot of them don't show their hair because the idea here is that there are as many interpretations as there are people. And this idea that there's one way and the rest, you know, are against us is what's, what has us in the hole we're in today. <sighs> Batana. Uh, I came up to my wife one day and said, uh, I created a character after you. She said, show me. I showed her. She said, that's not me. I said... <laughs> I said, look at the eyes. <laughs> We got very, very lucky. There's a lot of hard work involved in this project, but, but, but you can, nothing can substitute for luck or fate. So I was here in Dubai at the media conference. I gave my first talk ever about the 99 at the American University of Sharjah back in 05. Went to the media conference, waited by the coffee, waiting for the right reporter, met a guy who's actually a good friend of mine now, runs the National in Abu Dhabi, didn't know him at the time, Hassan Fattah, New York Times. Interviewed me, said next week the article's gonna come out. Week passes, two, three, four, no article. You know, paragraph in New York Times back then was huge. So I called him up, I said, Happy New Year. He said, thank you, we just had a baby. So congratulations. <laughs> Where's the article coming out? Next week. By then, no article. I figure the guy's name's not even Hassan, probably doesn't work for the New York Times. <laughs> and then, a few days afterwards, the world erupts in the Danish cartoon controversy. And I think, my God, I hope it doesn't come out. I hope it doesn't come out. <laughs> but the New York Times isn't stupid, right? Full page in the Sunday Times about the 99. Now what? <laughs> the now what is that we got covered in over 5,000 newspapers and magazines positively over the last three years. Everyone's speaking about the positive attributes in Islam that's shared by the rest of humanity. Time Magazine three times, Newsweek twice, New York Times at least five times. It's been amazing. And, and that's led, led, led us to do a, quite a few deals, which I'll talk only about a couple of them. We're the only ever regional intellectual property that's gone global. So we have been able to sell licenses in Hindi, Urdu, Bahasa, Indonesian, Chinese, which we're, we just announced today, Turkish, which launches through Panini. Uh, we've also been able to do a theme park that opened in Kuwait in February. We did a deal for six theme parks, the first of which has already opened. The animation, we were able to get Endemol, who are huge. They're the ones behind Big Brother, Deal or No Deal, Star Academy. Uh, they're co-financing co the animation. First time in their history that they finance something they don't own, even though they tried. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Spanish company that bought rights for stuff that they're selling in Spain, Portugal, Andorra, let's not forget Andorra, and some parts of the Middle East. It's a timeline of you know, what, what we've been able to achieve over the past few years, which I'm happy to send to anybody by email. But basically, how do you know when you sell your investors something as lofty as this cannot be another made in fifth world country production? It's got to be Superman. How do you know when you've achieved that? You know when DC Comics announces that in 2010 there will be a series where Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman are going to be working with the 99 towards common goals. So before I show you the animation clip, I'm going to ask a question. How many of you here have read The Catcher in the Rye? How many? Almost everybody. How many of you have killed in the name of that book? Nobody? You know, you laugh, but 30 years ago, Mark David Chapman shot and killed John Lennon with a copy of that novel in his hand. And he told the police he got the, he got the ideas to kill him from the book. A year later, John Hinckley also tried to kill President Ronald Reagan. Also during the interrogation, referred to the same book. So whose fault is that? Is it the book or the deranged lunatic who pulled out his own messages? I'll leave you with that thought. And please, George, with the animation. Thank you very much. Dr. Naif Al-Matawa.